You're listening to Agile Ideas, the podcast, hosted by Fatima Rabucci. For anyone listening out there not having a good day, please know there is help out there. I wanted to share some insights with you today around PPMs, Portfolio Project Management Software. Now, the reason for this is I'm seeing an abundance of options in the market right now. In fact, I'm seeing requests um, for more information and requests to actually provide feedback on tools that exist in the market today and have been privy to conversations with certain tools as well over my time within the last 16 years working in the corporate space. Now, if you are in the market for a PPM software, I can empathize with you in saying that there is a lot of choices out there. There is so many choices and the choices continue to grow. Now, portfolio project management tools typically have been used in larger organizations, organizations who have hundreds of projects and programs that they then need to roll up at an organizational level, at the executive level, so they can report on up to boards or maybe a very large um, organization uh, who has a high volume of projects. Maybe a mid-sized organization would also be another candidate for someone bringing in a PPM tool, typically medium and large organizations. That being said, smaller organizations may also bring in a PPM tool, but possibly not until there is slightly slightly larger um, team than some really small businesses. I mean, if you're running a dozen projects, you probably don't need a PPM tool. You could probably manage that um, within your CRM, your customer relationship management tool. Maybe you've got products like SharePoint or um, other products that you use in your business that help you to coordinate. Or simple as spreadsheets. I've run teams and quite large volumes of projects using simple spreadsheets. Now, it depends on the need, but the purpose of today is not to give you advice on what PPM is the right PPM for you, but rather to share some insight and some of the things to consider when going to select a PPM. Because as I mentioned, there is an abundance of options out there. Unfortunately, there isn't a single comparison for all of them. Depending on what your needs are, depending on what you're looking for, and depending on what you're going to use it for, will help determine what product or service that you're going to use for your PPM. I want to touch base on a number of key elements. One of them is the strategic need behind your PPM uh, request, your requirement for a PPM, understanding the requirement from a strategic perspective, understanding the process or processes that will be used or, uh, or adopted when bringing in a PPM. What processes exist today that may be manual that you will automate as a result of bringing in a PPM? Then thinking about the tools and the technologies that you may already have within your organization, within your department, within your team, and then also thinking about the information flow. Now, unfortunately, I've seen too many organizations bring in PPM software and doing so not thinking about those four things and really spending the time to understand the requirements behind why they're bringing in that PPM. And I'll give you some examples. In a previous organization, I recall them bringing in a new PPM software. Um, It was a software that was uh, all the rage at the time. um, And it was something that they felt would be the right product to replace an existing, more aging uh, product they had already in their business. So they decided to replace what they had with something new. The problem that they faced is after spending a significant amount of money modifying, customizing, and configuring that product to suit their specific organization, when they went into training and actually embedding some of those tool sets and some of the processes within that PPM, they did not incorporate feedback from the main end users. And that was the end users within the project support offices, the project management offices, 
within the project teams that would typically be accessing the PPM. And so what actually ended up happening is they focus fundamentally on the project management side of the PPM, but didn't give as much thought to the governance side of the PPM. So what happened? Well, they decided to change the way that they delivered projects. They decided to change the methods that they used to deliver projects. And as such, they ended up having to cut out a lot of what was in that product they they had customized and configured in the months prior and had to start again. Now, there's a lot of reasons why they had to start again, but fundamentally, there was a number of flaws within that PPM and they didn't ask some of the right questions. And more importantly, they didn't include all the relevant stakeholders that would need to be um, incorporated from a stakeholder feedback perspective. And that was something that they could have done and they probably would have got right had they done that. Another example where PPMs have gone wrong um, and not been introduced in the right way is when an organization decides to introduce a PPM tool within a specific department uh, or a division of the of the greater wider organization, not realizing that there are other um, other teams within the organization that are also bringing in different PPMs. One of the problems with a client um, that I've seen in the last few years is where they introduced a PPM that didn't integrate with their existing tools. It didn't integrate with Confluence. It didn't integrate with Jira. It didn't integrate with their SharePoint suite. It didn't integrate with a lot of things that they had inside their organization. So they selected a product that didn't meet the requirements that they should have identified at the very beginning. Strategically, it caused them a lot of problems and they was a, there was a lot of rework involved. So it's really important to get your requirements for your PPM solution right. But let's take a step back for a minute. One of the most, <coughs> excuse me, one of the most important things to think about before you go and invest time and money in introducing a new PPM product into your environment is what is your current level of maturity? Why is this important? Well, if you currently have a lot of ad hoc processes, unclear expectations around workflows, cl- uh, lack of clarity around roles and responsibilities, and a very rigid a very rigid approach to projects that differs in different pockets of your organization and you add all that together and then you try to introduce a PPM the PPM will not resolve all of that it's really important to understand and make sure that you have got clarity on where you are from a maturity perspective at the outset If you've got a higher level of maturity, therefore you have repeatable processes, maybe a well-managed process exists within your organization, then you're more likely to be able to use the software to scale the way that you run projects by integrating and automating some of the process that you may have been doing more manually. So it's really important that if you have a really low maturity, that the first thing you do is not go out and rush and buy a PPM software. There is so many PPM software choices out there and one of the challenges with the software, a lot of them, if not all of them, is they offer so many features. Those features themselves no doubt can be switched on and off but just being able to decipher what you specifically need in order for you to be able to work effectively moving forward once that system has been implemented is necessary. And if you don't do that, then what you will find, and I know because we've gone through this ourselves with other software programs that we've used in our business as a startup, is bringing in a software and not actually giving it the time and attention it needs and not making sure that you've got maturity around your processes 
before adopting something that is going to automate some of that. And so there's a lot of things to think about when introducing a PPM software into your business. Please don't just go out and rush and buy the first one that looks shiny and pretty and it does this and it does that. Yes, that will come, but you need to focus on what are the most pressing needs of the PPM that you need it to solve for you before you start adding all of the extra bells and whistles. For example, if you currently don't have an effective or well-balanced, well-articulated resource management process, well, if you introduce a PPM software that has a high-end, top-of-the-range, best practice approach to how to do resource management, workforce management, does not mean that you're going to be able to change the way that you're working today, which might be a lower maturity, and then go to that high-spec best practice approach. They need to align. You can't just go from a low level of maturity all the way to, you know, being at the top level in terms of um, advanced, advanced maturity. You need to kind of take that journey and go through that process iteratively till you can get to a point where that particular software is going to aid, not distract you and your teams and your projects. So what are some of the things that you need to consider when looking at choosing a PPM and identifying the requirements for your PPM? Well, as I mentioned before, there's a number of key areas and one of them is understanding from a strategic perspective, how will the PPM tool, regardless of the tool that you choose, going to support your strategic objectives within your organization? How have the features within your particular PPM been designed to support your work breakdown structure within your project management lifecycle? Does the PPM that you're going to be bringing in align project management across your organization or will it need to be customized and configured across different teams and different departments? What are the features that you need now versus what are the features that you might need later when thinking about turning on and turning off some of the features that are within that particular tool? When thinking about PPM, one of the other things to do is take a, take a leaf out of the Agile um, you know, playbook, if you like, and introduce elements of the PPM incrementally to get people used to it. So if the most important part for your business is workforce management, well, then focus on that. Perhaps it's you know, a pipeline management, visibility of all the projects in one place. Maybe it's reporting. Maybe it's dependency management or scheduling. Whatever it is, think about what is the thing that is going to drive the biggest outcome for you and focus on incrementally introducing parts of a new tool as opposed to a big bang and introducing everything at once. Also think about what is the track record of PPM tools within your organization. This is where I recommend that you take a PPM amnesty uh, a way to go and ask other departments, ask your executives to come together and list out or name all of the PPM tools that they can think of that they've used within their organization, that they've seen or maybe that they've got rolled out in a particular area and so forth. Doing that will help you understand, is there a particular tool that exists in your organization today that someone already is using and you maybe could leverage that? Or maybe it's not a good tool and therefore you need to supersede it and bring something else in. But it's better to know that up front than to find out midway through that one department has evolved significantly in the absence of an enterprise PPM and introduced that particular tool. Then you need to think about whether it's a specific tool or whether it's multiple tools that make up your PPM. For example, some of the Microsoft products enable you to um, create different types of uh, PPM type features within Microsoft Online with Power BI and other uh, parts of their tools and products. And so you might find that you need a solution that um, is multiple solutions or you might find that it's a particular organization that offers the whole product that you need. This doesn't just apply to PPMs. This can apply to any 
vendor requirement selection around software. For example, recently working with a client in their um, in their uh, hunt for a HRIS and a payroll and a rostering solution, well, we found that it actually might make sense to do multiple solutions to meet their specific needs. So you won't necessarily always going to find one product that does everything you need. So it's another thing to think about that particular element and also strategically, what does your roadmap look like? If you're going to introduce a PPM this year and then you know that on the strategic roadmap for your organization that you're bringing in this whiz-bang enterprise-wide uh, management tool and it comes with all the bells and whistles and it comes with a PPM, well, maybe you might be investing time and money now that might be better well spent in other places. So it's another thing to think about. And then when you think about introducing a PPM solution, well, who within the organization is going to support it? If you're a really large organization, there's going to be a lot of support needed, not just the end users or the administrators of the particular program, but actually people that can support it from an IT perspective as well. So you need to think about how will that be managed? How will that particular program or software replace some of your manual processes today? And if you implement additional features at the same time, is there more benefit than looking at features staggered over a period, greater period of time? So these are some of the things to think about from a strategic perspective. Then we come to process. So now when we think about things from a process perspective, from a process perspective, there are so many things to consider, but one of the main ones that I mentioned earlier is thinking about the maturity of your team or your department or your organization, wherever this PPM is coming in. Typically, it's at the enterprise level, but sometimes you find a PPM might be introduced within IT or, or within another department. So what is your process? Do you have a clear view on what the processes are? For example, when developing out processes that relate to projects for clients, we typically create in collaboration with their team, a overarching framework. And that framework will consist of all of the processes and procedures that relate to project management within that particular team, that department, or that organization. So have you thought of that? Have you already looked at what processes you have in place and how those processes can be then automated and also how many of those processes may be superseded or replaced with a PPM. Now, don't think that a PPM is the answer to all your problems because it doesn't always necessarily mean that it will resolve any and all challenges that you're having. Now, surely it should solve for some of them, um, and typically that is automating quite manual-driven processes Fundamentally, it usually starts by collating all projects for visibility at the management level in one place, and then usually typically moves on to uh, milestone reporting, financials, or resource management. They're typically the three or four key areas that PPMs would usually focus on. When thinking about the PPM solution that you are introducing or planning on introducing, one of the things to consider is, is that particular PPM going to address your current needs, the needs of your teams, the people that are living and breathing the delivery of projects every day, your project managers, your architects, your solution analysts, your process analysts, your PMO, your project coordinator. Now I pause there because I wonder whether the question has been asked. Has there been any analysis taken and any feedback given from the people that are effectively going to be the end users. Don't make the same mistake that other organizations have made where they provide a PPM tool and have had no consultation with the end users. Someone in vendor management picks it, someone maybe in finance picks it, yet those teams don't run projects. So make sure that you involve people that are not in uh, sorry, not just in operational areas, but more in projects, so they can provide some feedback and help ensure its continuity. So there's a lot of things to think about for process, the skills, competencies, the maturity, the processes that you plan to automate, are they documented, and what's the feedback that you're getting from other people as well. Then we move on to the tools and the technologies. 
Now, how does that PPM product or software or tool that you're bringing in support your overall project management architecture? You know, what are all the tools that exist for project management within your organization? Um, And as part of the previous step of doing a meeting amnesty, it'll help you to actually identify that. And you might find that there's a lot more tools out there that are probably not that useful um, that exist within your organization that if you just tried, you might find them and realize that actually you've got a bigger problem and that is way too many tools that are probably still on leases, still being paid for, and maybe no one is even using. So something to think about. Then when we think about other elements around tools and technologies, well, are you going to be purchasing this particular software outright? Is it a cloud-based software? Uh, Is it hosted? Um, Is it possible to transfer uh, content from an existing PPM into the new one? Or maybe how is the process to take the data from manual processes that exist within the organization today and upload them into the PPM? Or do you draw a line in the sand and say, as of this date, we're going to start using the new tool and everything else will get archived um, in the old manual process before? Um, What are some of the security requirements of the software in the program? Is the PPM tool that you are introducing within your business, is it an internationally owned company product? Is it a local-based product? What kind of security protocols do they have to maintain your data when using the product? What kind of user access matrix permission settings do they have? How easy is it to train the trainer? How easy is it to configure the tool? Do you need to bring in consultants to do that for you? These are some of the other things to think about when we talk about tools and technologies. And then finally, information flows. So one of my favorites, one of the things that my team and I spend a lot of time doing, more time than I care to remember sometimes, is just how broken processes are throughout an organization where they may stem from projects and link to other departments, but nobody is giving it the time and the energy to connect those. So if you think about processes like financial project finance management, project finances are one thing. Operational finances is another thing. They're related. I get that. But when we think about finance and projects and finance in operations, well, you've got accounting requirements, you've got project finance from a project management perspective requirements, you've probably got uh, board approvals or steering committee approvals that need some sort of information flow, you probably have information relating to headcount and FTE that goes to HR, that's another information flow. You've probably got information that goes to internal audit. If you're working in the banking and finance sector, sector, you've probably got information that goes to regulators. If you are working in any organization, regardless of what part of the organization that you're in, projects probably touch that department in some way, shape or form. So some of the things to think about is what are the information flows, not only in the PPM and where that goes, but surrounding the PPM. For example, what information goes out of a PPM to a CIO or a CEO? What information gets collated from the PPM and goes up to a board? They often do. A lot of these tools provide information that goes up the line. And if not managed well, you know what happens? Well, you'll either get watermelon projects where something's green on the outside and red on the inside, or you'll get information that goes up the line and is actually not very well managed and information will get seen by CIOs and CEOs and other executives that may not have been fact-checked, value-checked, quality-checked, etc. by whoever it is that needs to, typically in a governance-type function. So information flows and understanding how they work and the interconnect activity between those processes for that information is so, so critical. Think about from the moment an inf- um, a PM, for example, provides information into the PPM and then when where it goes from there, well, that's a really important thing to think about because that will then also support what kind of requirements that you need from an information management perspective. 
do you need that information to go to various uh, sources across an organization? Does it have multiple sources of information feeding in from HR, from finance, or is it standalone and it's only used by project delivery people? Can the information within this uh, tool or software be easily migrated from current systems? Does it need to connect to a general ledger? Typically they do. Does it need to connect to a um, scheduling tool? Does it need to connect to a rostering system? Does it need to connect to a HR system? There are so many questions that need to be asked. And understanding those will help you to make sure that the information that is going into the system is going to be the right information so that the information coming out is also going to be more clear and accurate. So you need to think about those things as well when it comes to information flows. But again, if you have a good level of maturity and if you've not had your maturity in your organisation independently assessed, then I don't believe it would be accurate because it's hard for us when we're involved to actually give it an honest perspective. Hence why sometimes we create watermelon projects where green on the outside, red on the inside. All best intentions, of course, but that's the way that sometimes projects are perceived. And the same is with anything. That is why I stress to make sure that you're thinking about the maturity, thinking about the information flows, thinking about other tools and technologies that exist today that may have to integrate with this product that you bring in. Think about the processes and whether or not those processes have been thought about and documented. And then how does that link to strategy and the strategic objectives of your organization? If you bring the strategic together with the delivery view and together with the operations view, at AMO we call that the triangle. Sounds really simple. But fundamentally, everything we do is about bringing strategy, delivery, and operations together. You do that, you're going to have a better end result. Now, this specific video and podcast uh, is about choosing a PPM and developing a list of requirements. As you know, I've not shared any specific products or tools because, as I said, there is so many out there and there is no one product that beats them all. There isn't. It depends on your specific requirements and what you need. Thank you for watching and listening to this uh, topic about PPMs. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, send through some comments or questions. And if you need some help trying to decide what's right for your organization, uh, happy to connect. You can reach me at contact at agilemanagementoffice.com. Thank you, and I hope you all have an amazing day. Please remember, if you're not having a good day, there is help out there.